Hey, what's going on everybody? Echo Side Fiend here once again, and uh, as the title of this video will suggest, this will be my review, uh, my uh, experiences, and at the very end I'll show what I picked up at Astronomicon 2. Uh, it was this weekend, uh, it's actually still going on today, uh, my friend and I just went Friday night and Saturday. So um, yeah, let's just go ahead and get right into this. So as, uh, as uh, just the same as last year, I went with my buddy Joe, who uh, founded, owns, and operates uh, mygeekscene.com. I will have a link below in the description, so make sure you check them out. And uh, in a couple weeks, uh, he'll be getting a, an interview up that I will be talking about here in a little while, but I think it's one that you'll definitely want to watch. So, um, uh, as always, thank you, Joe, for uh, bringing me along. And uh, he got us press passes uh, just like last year, so he got in for free. I absolutely would have paid to get in. This was t a totally awesome event, but it was definitely nice to get in for free and uh, have a few privileges with the press pass. So it's definitely cool. So thank you, Joe. And uh, again, make sure you check out his uh, website, mygeekscene.com. Link in the description below. So uh, like I said, we went Friday night and then all day Saturday. Uh, we got a little bit of a late start Friday, which was totally my fault. Uh, I still decided to work uh, Friday afternoon. Uh, and uh, usually Friday is pretty late for me. Uh, so I figured like, oh, you know, I'll get an early start, which I did. And then I was like, you know, I'll just fly through the day and we'll get a nice early start onto the road. So, uh, the weather was not very good, uh, when I hit the road in the morning for my route and, uh, just one thing after another just kept, uh, holding me up. Uh, I wasn't able to uh, drive regular speed. Most of the time I ended up getting out even later. So I started, started earlier and got out later. So, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but, uh, had I not started early, we would have gotten an even later start on the road anyway. So I'm definitely glad I did that. So we did hit the road about six o'clock. Uh, I ended up driving this year, last year he drove. So I was like, uh, this year I'll, I'll drive. And, uh, we hit the road, the weather, uh, on the way out there for about the first hour, um, uh, from Grand Rapids to Lansing is about an hour. That took us about an hour and a half. The weather was kind of spotty. The roads were a little sketchy. Pretty much once we got through Lansing, it was smooth sailing. Uh, the, the roads were nice and clear uh, and, uh, you know, pretty uneventful trip out there. So we got there uh, about probably 9 o'clock, um, got got in, got a parking spot right away. We got checked in because we did uh, have a room at the uh, at the event at the uh, uh, Wyndham Sterling uh, Hotel. Uh, so we got all checked in. We went and ate at the restaurant that was right there, and then we did... Uh, I had bought tickets to the Monsters Ball concert. That's the main reason we went Friday. And uh, we found out the day before that we could have used our press passes to get in. So, But they were only 15 bucks, and I certainly don't mind uh, putting a, a little extra money in uh, in the pocket of the uh, you know Twisted and all the event coordinators and all that. I'm sure it's not a cheap, cheap event to put on. So I certainly don't mind uh, doing that. But we <laughs> would have been nice to know a little earlier that we could have used our press passes. But whatever, it is what it is. So uh, we went to the concert. That was just in the panel room. Um, I didn't think the sound was that great in there for the concert. It was definitely a good show, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it was, um, I don't know, I was telling Joe, too, he'd never seen any of these uh, artists before. He's not into that scene at all. Uh, so it was his first exposure to it. But I was telling him, I felt like the bass was a little bit loud. Not like overwhelmingly loud, like you couldn't stand it. But it just was like louder than the rest of the music and then the vocals were quite loud too so you just hear the vocals the bass and then you had to kind of for me anyway maybe it was just me I don't know but I kind of had to strain to hear all the rest you know the rhythm and and the beats and all that you know and it just I don't know it wasn't the best sound it's still a good show uh it wasn't terribly long uh each each uh, set wasn't a full set I don't think anyway it didn't feel like it but um you know for 15 bucks I mean it was just kind of an addition to the to the um the event and uh it was definitely cool though so and uh joe uh seemed to enjoy it uh, like i said it's not normally his type of music it's not his scene but uh he definitely uh seemed to be having a good time and so that was the monsters ball uh it was uh i got down there i had to take a little bit of a break by the time we got there because i was just fucking tired as hell uh so when i got down there axe uh i caught about four of their songs uh, and then, uh, Blaze and ROC played, and I, I would say they maybe played 20, 25 minutes, and then Twisted played. I don't feel like that was much more than a half hour or so. Pretty much the second they were done, I went up and went to bed, because by the time I actually got to sleep, I had been awake for almost 24 hours, so I actually wanted to go to the late night gaming. Uh, my buddy Big Andy was running that. Uh, I did run into him right when I got there. 
Uh, and he said the same thing. He'd been awake for hours and hours and hours because he had worked. And uh, so I don't know how he was doing it. Man. But uh, uh, so I did want to go to that, but I just was way too tired. So um, unfortunately, I didn't get to check any of that out. But I, I got a good night's sleep, uh, thankfully. And uh, we got up the next day. We did have to check out because we were just staying um, uh, the one night. So I just threw our stuff in the car and then went and checked out the convention. So the setup was pretty much the same as last year. Uh, when you walked in the main door, there's a couple different entrances, but I would say like the main door, uh, just to the left was, uh, where all the, uh, MNE merchandise was, where the artists would be doing their, uh, autograph signings and all that. Um, and then, uh, you could, after you pass them, you could go to the left. Uh, that's where the internet celebrities were last year, like the game chasers and where, uh, angry video game nerd would have been. But last, uh, last year his uh, flight got canceled, but, Back there this year was mostly like uh, action figures. They had a huge video game, um, uh, retro video game booth. Uh, I, I didn't catch the name of uh, the actual vendor, uh, you know, but their their setup was pretty good. They had like a couple rows of uh, uh, old retro games. They had a pretty good selection. Uh, Super Nintendo, uh, regular Nintendo, Sega Genesis, all that. They had tons of action figures. This is in that same booth. Just They had this bin in the middle that was just filled with like beat up old wrestling figures and uh and not, not just wrestling everything uh, just action figures in general but there was a lot of wrestling figures i was digging through it and finding those old retro uh that like these are like the uh i can, I can never direct myself in the camera uh like so those figures there those are like modeled after those old uh, ha uh hasbro i think they were hasbro uh action figures of the wwf uh i had all those when i was growing up i had the ring I, but i was finding a ton of those but they were all beat to hell and I still have all of mine, so I didn't really need any of them. But And then uh, they did have a lot of good uh, re uh, uh, wrestling figures that were loose, you know, but they were, like, in, uh, they would have them in a bag that was, like, sealed shut. Uh, but they would have all the parts, and they were in good condition. They had a really good Ultimate Warrior one that I kind of wanted to get. It was only 10 bucks, but I was just like, I just don't really need to spend the money on it. So I did uh, refrain from picking any of those up, because as you can tell, I do like collecting um, uh, some WWE figures, or just wrestling figures in general. I don't have to own every one of them or anything like that but just the wrestlers I really like and if it's a really good uh you know really good representation of them I like picking them up and I do like these old uh retro ones I have been picking all those up but any of them that I can find anyway but um yeah so it was just kind of stuff I didn't need so I was like all right I'm just gonna pass on that but there was tons of action figures everywhere uh there was one booth that had a really cool action figure again I did not pick it up but I wanted to uh, of the um, the Fog, the movie The Fog by John Carpenter. I think this was the remake. Uh, this figure was of the remake, but it was still like one of the pirate ghosts. You know, it was, uh, it was really fucking cool. Um, and but that that was all in package and everything. But just really cool. I'd never seen those before. Uh, as usual, there was tons of artists. There was several different places I wanted to buy some pieces of art. Um, uh, and I did pick up two pieces by, uh, Eric Hodson that I talked about, uh, last year's Astronomicon review. Um, he was there again. I picked up two more pieces of his work and, uh, one of them I had signed by a certain somebody that I'll be getting to. Um, so yeah, just wandered around the rest of the time. Like I said, lots of art, comic books, uh, just, uh, I mean like anything you could think of just, uh, uh, you know, uh, action figures, video games, art, comics, uh, anything, you know? It was just, it was so cool. Kind of crammed in. Uh, that's kind of one, one thing. I would definitely say they've already outgrown their, uh, their venue. They're, I, I'm going to say, I, I, I believe they have it scheduled there again next year. But if this year is any indication, they're definitely going to have to look for a bigger place because it was freaking packed. Everything's packed in very well put together. I'm not saying that it wasn't, but it was very crammed. And then the crowd, again, the crowd was being totally cool. Staff was being super cool, but there's just so many people. You just, it was numerous times I'd be walking down an aisle, I'll have to turn around and go back the other way because you just couldn't get through. Uh, so I guess it's kind of a good problem to have, you know, because it shows that lots of people are there, but, uh, it was a, a little bit crammed in. Uh, I do believe a bigger venue, even just slightly bigger would, uh, would benefit them big time. But, um, again, uh, lots of stuff to do and see. Uh, so all the way at the very, uh, other end, uh, was the celebrity area. And that's, uh, I only get, just like last year, I only picked one, uh, to do the meet and greet. There was a couple that I would have liked to do, but just, uh, I decided on one of my all time favorite professional wrestlers, uh, somebody that, uh, 
one of the reasons that I even became a professional wrestling fan to begin with. Uh, and somebody that has, you know, put on some of the best matches and the best storylines that I have ever been witness to. And somebody that I have so much respect for, for, for myself, having no, uh, interest in becoming a professional wrestler, just as a fan, this is somebody I respect so much. And it was Jake, the fucking snake Roberts, man. I got to fucking meet him. I, I, uh, you know, I, I, I got a picture with him and I'll probably put that as like the, um, cover of this. Cause I don't really know how to insert pictures in here. So, but I, I took the picture and I sent it to my friend, my old neighbor, uh, growing up, who was also a huge wrestling fan. And I, I was like, dude, look who I just <laughs> met. And it took him a little while to write back, but he was just like, you lucky motherfucker. <laughs> I wrote back and this is def this is totally true. I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't get uh, too tongue tied. I don't get starstruck too much. Uh, but I, I could barely even stammer out any words to him. I was just kind of like, I, 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 you're like one of my favorite wrestlers, man. <laughs> That's like about all I could, uh, all I could put out. And he was just like, thanks man. You know, he was super cool. It was very, very quick interaction. Cause he had a lot of people that wanted to, to meet him. But, um, uh, so I did a picture and then I did have him sign an item that I will show here. And, uh, it was just something else, man, to stand there. Next to somebody who, I mean, I became a, a wrestling fan in like 1989, 1990, and he was already in the WWF, and I immediately was like, holy shit, that dude is fucking awesome, you know, and uh, all these years later to know like all the hardships he's been through, and to see him turn his life around, see him get uh, put into the Hall of Fame, and then to like meet him in person, you know, I know he doesn't wrestle anymore, but um, just... Man, I one of the first people to, in a long time to make me be starstruck. So, uh, shout out to Jake Roberts for uh, that uh, interaction as quick as it was. It's something I'm never gonna forget, and it's something that means a lot to me. So, um, just to have a, a chance to even just shake his hand and and you know just say thank you for all the all the work that he did and all the uh, all the matches and oh man, it was something else. So um, there was a few other uh, wrestlers I wouldn't have mind. Uh, Meeting, I did want to uh, meet Gold Dust. Uh, me and Joe did talk to him very briefly just uh, as we were leaving, uh, but I didn't do the meet and greet, didn't get a picture. Um, Scott Steiner was there. Never been the biggest Scott Steiner fan. Uh, I don't know. He, he's all right, but uh, I just, I loved the Steiner brothers, but I just, as him himself, I wasn't super into. So um, let's see. Uh, uh, D. Snyder was there. Uh, I did meet him many years ago. Uh, at a concert, uh, so I didn't like. I, I would have liked to have gotten a, a picture with him, but uh, and when I met him, that was years ago, uh, long before smartphones, camera phones, anything, even before cell phones. I don't even really. I cell phones were around, but not like everybody had them. This is when I was like 21, 22, you know, so a good 20 years ago. But um, so yeah, I would have liked to have met him, but he was there. Uh, Bam Margera was there. I did go walking past him. Bam Margera is another, uh, you know, skateboarder that I've been aware of since I was like 17 or 18, somewhere along in there, uh, long before the jackass stuff, long before, uh, you know, that he was a household name. Um, I probably would have done a, a, you know, meet and greet with him. Uh, but I, I walked past him and he was there and then like the rest of the day, I never saw him at his table. So, um, but, uh, uh, he looks, uh, looked pretty good. I mean, as far as, um, I know he's been through some rough shit lately, so, uh, he looked all right. Um, so I'm glad to see that he's doing okay. But, uh, uh, the other celebrity that I was thinking about, uh, doing a meet and greet with, but I decided against just, I just didn't want to spend the money. It was John Kassir, uh, the voice of the Crypt Keeper. I also did not realize until I was just walking by and saw his little list of stuff. I didn't realize he was the voice of Buster Bunny on Tiny Toon Adventures, so... That's pretty cool, a uh, pretty uh, little uh, piece of information that I didn't know. Um, and, yeah, obviously he's done lots of other stuff, too. But um, And then uh, I also wouldn't have minded meeting uh, Edward Furlong. Uh, myself, uh, you know, being like uh, 12, 13, somewhere along in there. I think I was 13. Uh, when Terminator 2 Judgment Day came out, you know, that is like one of the biggest movies uh, of, I mean, it was probably the biggest movie of that year. I wouldn't be surprised. And uh, I would say it's, you know, probably had one of the biggest impact on me as far as just, you know, action flicks go, stuff like that. Uh, the Terminator series, you know, especially Terminators 1 and 2 are two of my favorite movies. Uh, Terminator 2 is absolutely among my favorite movies of all time. And uh, so, I mean, he was like, he's about the same age as me. Uh, so just to have seen him in that movie and 
Uh, you know, he was, you know, obviously a very integral part of it playing young John Connor. Uh, to just walk past and just see him sitting there. I mean, you know, there's people coming and going and talking to him. I don't mean he was just sitting there like, like this, waiting for people to notice him. But just to see him sitting there, I, I walked past and I look at it, you know, kind of glance over it. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, dude. This guy was like one of the most integral parts of this movie that was like a huge impact on me. You know, one of the biggest uh, movies of like my uh, childhood or early teenage years. Um, so it would have been cool to to meet and just say hi to him, but uh, again, I, I just decided to just uh, do uh, Jake the Snake. So uh, that was more than enough for me, you know, to to say like you know to have met you know one of the most uh, uh, the biggest wrestling stars to me ever. And I mean, I think to a lot of people too. I mean, I think he's widely regarded as one of the best in history. So to have met him totally made up for you know, kind of passing on some of the other ones. I would have liked to, but again, I just, I gotta be careful with my money. So I'm actually going to Monday Night Raw tomorrow here in Grand Rapids and I'll probably buy a shirt there. I got to pay my buddy back for the ticket. And it was just kind of like, yeah, you know, I just don't need to spend the money. So yeah, pretty much the rest of the day. I just kind of did uh, meet Twisted. Uh, I went through the line. Uh, I've obviously I've met Twisted numerous times. So I went through the line and the line was getting really long, and uh, so by the time I got up there, they were asking, the, the guy who was running it was asking to just pick between either just getting an autograph or uh, doing a photo. I've got several photos with them, so I brought a few things to get signed, so um, I'll show those. And um, uh, yeah, so I just uh, did autographs with them on my way up. Uh, Axe was right before them. I had Axe sign uh, their albums I have. I'm going to show all this stuff. I did get a picture with them. Um, and, uh, a little bit later too, I thought this was really cool. Uh, I guess Blaze was up there. I was off doing other stuff, but, um, it sounds like, um, like, so he was in line. I came walking back in and he was just, uh, kind of gathering up some stuff. And there was a, a, a woman, uh, like a mom with her two kids. They're very young. It looked like one looked, he was like six or seven. The other one, maybe like eight or nine, somewhere along in there. And, uh, the younger one was crying and the other one was visibly upset. And I could kind of hear her like saying like, you know, she's like, I know they said that they've got to get going though. It's okay. You know? And, uh, so it sounds like maybe security, obviously not being mean, but just was like, Hey, you know, we got to cut the line off now because, uh, he's got to, you know, go do, go do something. And, uh, so Blaze was gra gathering up his stuff and he turned around and he saw them and, uh, he kind of like looked at the little kid. He's like, Hey, what's wrong, homie? You know? And, and, uh, she's like, Oh, he's upset. Cause he didn't get to meet you. And he's like, what? He's like, come on over here. And he grabbed both of them, brought them over to the table and signed their shirts and gave them some eight by tens, you know, signed their, uh, signed the, um, promos for them and took pictures with them. And he was like, Hey, is that better guys? You know, and they were both like, yeah, you know, and I was like, fuck yeah, dude. Uh, already respect Blaze, uh, you know, a shit ton. And that just made my respect for him go even higher. So shout out to Blaze for doing that. That was fucking cool as hell. I just witnessed it. Nobody I knew or anything like that, but just, uh, that was really cool. So hell yeah, Blaze, you fucking rock. Uh, already respected you enough, but that was, that just, uh, pushed it up even higher. So thought that was really cool. That was a little story I wanted to share. Um, uh, a little bit later, uh, the whole MNE crew was out, uh, in the lobby area, you know, in front of an MNE banner and you could jump up there and get a picture with the whole fucking crew. So I did that. Uh, that was pretty cool. And, um, all this stuff's on my Facebook. So if you are friends with me on my Facebook, you can definitely check it out. And, um, that's about it. Uh, as far as the convention, um, I mean, there was a lot going on. Um, but I mean, just kind of, as far as me, just wandering around, checking things out. That's most of the stuff that I did and saw, except for one other thing that I do want to talk about. And um, I will definitely be putting a link for this when Joe gets it all put up. Uh, and this was all Joe. I had no uh, part in uh, setting this up or anything. This was all him. Uh, but he got to interview the motherfucking demented duo themselves, Twisted. And uh, so we, um, about uh, 5 o'clock, we went over to the, uh, the room where they were doing the interviews Got all of his gear set up. Uh, Scotty and the crew from Fago Lovers was interviewing Axe right before them, uh, right before right before us. And uh, so we were outside and uh, they were doing their thing. Uh, came out, they they had headed out. So we go in and get all our stuff set up. Uh, it was supposed to start at five thirty. Twisted was running a little behind, which is totally understandable. There was a ton of shit going on. I'm sure they were being pulled in every fucking direction. Uh, so Joe did have to cut the uh, interview down a little bit. Uh, they get, we got 15 minutes. Um, but they come in, uh, I was sitting in the room. I was not on camera, but, uh, if you watch the, uh, when you, if you do watch the, uh, interview, I'm, uh, just on the camera side. 
Uh, I was keeping an eye on time, letting Joe uh, know like when he needed to start wrapping it up. Uh, but I got to sit in there with him, and Joe was a great interviewer. He had a ton of uh, questions ready. He did have to edit some of them out, but uh, he does really good. Uh, he does hardcore research when he does interviews, uh, so he's not just asking, like, uh, who are your biggest musical influences? Like, he really does uh, digs into their background and to ask them questions that they probably don't get very often to get them talking. And uh, I do feel like he was getting that. Like, uh, Mad Rocks was just, like, going like crazy, man. Like, I think he was just pretty excited to answer the questions. Um, but they were both super fucking cool. And uh, when he gets that uh, interview all uh, edited together and all put together uh, and posted, I will put a link for it here. And I know uh, Fago Lovers has said they will uh, share it as well. So, uh, But that was fucking cool as hell. Again, I've uh, been around Twisted several times, uh, met him and everything, but that was just really cool to be able to be right there and uh, you know see the interview. And apparently that's the only interview they did all weekend. So that was pretty fucking cool. And again, it was all Joe. I had no hand in that. It was all him, all Michigan Geek scene. So um uh, props to Joe and uh, his website and everything for uh, setting that all up. So and for inviting me to sit in there and be part of it. So that was fucking cool as hell. So yeah, that's pretty much the uh, gist of it. After that, we just kind of uh, hung around for a little while, killed a little time, wandered. That's when we uh, we were leaving, and uh, Gold Dust was uh, by his table, so we just walked up to him and shook his hand, and uh, you know just said thanks for all the hard work he's done, and uh, all the work he's done for the industry, and. Um, he did say he's pretty close to being medically cleared to come back. His knees are almost healed. So I'm really excited to see that. He looked good, in good shape. And, uh, you know, glad to uh, hear he overcame demons that he had. And he's coming back at it. So I can't wait. So shout out to Gold Dust for being so cool talking to us for a few minutes. And, uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, just show uh, some of the things I picked up and some of the things I got autographed. So uh, first off, I'll just show... Um, Obviously, continuous evolution of life. I've had this. I had it pre-ordered. I got it in the mail. Uh, so I've had it literally since release day. But um, I did have them sign. Uh, so obviously, Madrox, Monoxide, and um, Draven signed right down there. So that was pretty fucking cool. Got that. And then um, I did pick up the uh, the new Haunted Hions, which uh, I'm going to be uh, talking a little bit about uh, Source Point Press as well. But uh, this is uh, issue number two. Uh, this is apparently, I bought this from Dirk Manning, this is, uh, he's the writer, Let's see if I can get that without the glare, uh, he said this is gonna be a variant cover of a variant cover, so he's like, this looks a little different than the other variant covers, so I'm like, alright, that's pretty cool, so, picked that up, had all of them signed, this is Dirk Manning, uh, this is, uh, is it, uh, Mariana Pascasta, and then the, uh, news the artist, and it's, uh, Alessandro, uh, I'm sorry, I forget his name. Maybe it's right on the cover. Uh, yeah, Alessandro Di Fornasari. I guess they're Italian, but um, so these are the uh, two artists. That's Dirk Manning, the um, uh, uh, writer, and then I had uh, Madrox Monoxide right there and right there. Sign that. So, and then I also did pick up the um, uh, Jamie Madrox cover, uh, and I did have the artists and the. Uh, uh, what do I want to see? The uh, writer um, signed the cover, and then I, I bought this after I did the meet and greet with Twisted, so then I was thinking maybe I'd try to have them sign uh, sign the cover after we were done with the interview, but they were in a big hurry, so I didn't even want to bother them, so uh, I didn't end up uh, doing that. So, oh, I got these buried here, kind of forgot to show. I uh, got the uh, Axe CDs, I've already owned these as well. I bought these uh, both at Fright Fest, uh, Grand Rapids last uh, this past 2018, so, uh, so I already owned them, but just had them signed, they were fucking cool as hell, super cool dudes, uh, we ended up talking about wrestling for a couple minutes, and really nice guys, so, uh, and then, let's see, oh, I did pick, uh, whoops, uh, I did pick this up, just, uh, a lanyard, I've been, uh, I don't know, buying a few of these, just so I can kind of switch them out, so just an Astronomicon, uh, lanyard, so, uh, oh, I did want to show the, uh, program, so, Nice full color program, just like last year. Pretty much the same same design. Uh, had all your map, list of vendors, schedule, uh, just another uh, schedule for panels and all that kind of stuff. Some ads, uh, frequently asked questions, things like that. So all full color, really cool, uh, good quality. So I did grab uh, one to keep good. This is the one I put in my backpack. The other one I kind of carried in my pocket so I could pull it out and look at it. You know for uh, 
to see when things were going on. So uh, this is uh, throughout the day. I kept talking to that uh, Dirk Manning, the writer of Haunted High Ons. Uh, super cool dude. And then I went to the um, Haunted High Ons uh, panel and he was discussing. He was kind of kind of moderating it. He was sit sitting up at the group, uh, at the table with the group. Uh, it was the, the artists and then uh, Twisted. Uh, but he was kind of keeping the conversation going and everything. So he was talking about his history with comics. And it turns out he's an old school skater like I am and shit. So I was like, hell yeah, man. So I was looking at this. He has several volumes of him. This is volume one. He did have a graphic novel, hardcover graphic novel that was 60 bucks. But I figured I'd check out one of them just to make sure it's what I'm into. Because I'm not the biggest comics guy, but this just sounded like really cool. Uh, you know, it's uh, so we got 13 Tales of Terror. So it's going to be a horror style. Uh, again, he's the writer, not the artist, but the artwork is really good. Uh, he had a lot of different, it says, uh, Dirk Manning and Friends, so he's got a lot of different artists. Um, but it, it sounds really cool, so I was like, I'm gonna check it out, and then uh, I had him autograph it, he did make it out, like, to me. And, um, so, yeah, he was, a uh, really cool dude, I ended up chit-chatting with him a couple times throughout the day, and, uh, so this was 15, so I was like, I'll check it out, just, uh, and if I like it, I'll probably pick up the rest, so... Last year, uh, I was uh, uh, in my review. I talked uh, quite a bit about Eric Hodson, uh, who's an artist. He does all kinds of uh, different styles of art, but uh, he does, he's a big wrestling fan. So uh, he was actually wearing a Ronda Rousey shirt. So he does a lot of uh, wrestling art. So I showed off the ones I bought last year. I bought another two pieces from him this year. So I did uh, pick up his Bullet Club. This is obviously the original Bullet Club. So you got Prince Devitt, AJ Styles, Nick and Matt Jackson, Carl Anderson. Um, Luke Gallows, and Bad Luck Fale, and Tama Tonga. So this is the original Bullet Club. Uh, it kind of looks like a uh, DC cover. So I'm going to be buying a frame for that and hanging that up. Or I might just swap out one of the other ones that I've had up for a while. So I picked up that one. And then I also picked up this one, which I've already got framed. Uh, and this was uh, pretty much my plan right from the get-go when I knew he was going to be there. That I would pick up the Jake the Snake Roberts one. And then have Jake the Snake himself autograph it so right when we got there pretty much the first thing i did when i went in was to go find his booth uh, uh eric hodson's and um uh, you know picked up the two i uh, picked up this one and then i picked out the bullet club by looking through the book because i wasn't sure what other one i wanted because there were two for 25 so uh but this one i had uh planned right from the get-go that i'd be picking this up and having jake the snake sign it and then I, I in case that he didn't have this i did have an action figure of jake the snake to have signed but um you you just uh, for the I did the package deal, which is like a photo and uh, one autograph, so it went with this. So, But I uh, got home and immediately framed this. I already had the frame ready, <laughs> so I was all set to go. So, love it, man. Great artwork, and then uh, obviously signed by Eric Hodson, and then signed by one of the greatest professional wrestlers of all time, so... Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's everything I picked up and um, everything I had signed, and uh, that was my experience. So, man, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I am absolutely planning on going next year, uh, and uh, Joe already wants to go next year too. And uh, as far as I know, it's at the same place this coming year, or this uh, you know the next one will be. Uh, but then after that, I'm pretty sure they're going to have to move to a different venue because they are uh, pulling in a lot of people. Uh, like I stated last year, I think a lot of people go that aren't even Juggalos. They just go because it's a Comic Con or a pop culture convention uh, with lots of uh, lots of things to do. Even if you're not even slightly into the Juggalo scene at all. I mean, like I said, Joe is not into it at all. He's a death metal head, you know. So, uh, but he's we've gone two years in a row now, you know, and uh, he's already got contacts there and everything. And uh, I know he had a blast last year. And I know he had a blast this year. So, you know, it pulls in a lot of people, and then I I, I feel. Maybe people that come that aren't into the Juggalo scene will get introduced to it. And maybe like, hey, you know, what's this music all about? Maybe I should look into it. Maybe they'll like it. Maybe they won't. Who knows? But it at least exposes them to it. So, uh, yeah, again, totally worth going. I recommend if you're in the area to go check it out. Uh, it was totally worth it. I know there's, you know, a little bit of a division in the uh, scene right now. But if you can look past that, it's definitely a good event. And um, it, it's totally worth it. Uh, real quickly, I want to give a shout out to Raven. Uh Raven Breed, uh, ran into her, uh, both Friday night and, um, uh, uh, throughout the day Saturday. Uh, she is an old, uh, Juggalo YouTuber, so, and she is going to be, uh, she's just recently started getting back into it, so, uh, if you have if you're not subscribed to her, uh, I'll put a link to her channel in the description, and also, shout out to Gage, uh, ran into him, he's one of my, one of my buddies for a couple of years now. I know he was doing YouTube, I don't know if he still is, 
So, Gage, if you're watching this, uh, send me a link to your channel, and I will put that down uh, in the description as well. So, uh, shout out to both of you. Uh, also, shout out to Knowledge to MC. I ran into him. And uh, I think that's pretty much everybody I ran into that I know. Uh, also, just real quick, shout out to Josh, who was part of um, Axe's crew. He was uh, uh, hanging out, uh, chilling with me and Joe while Axe was doing their interview with Fago Lovers. Super cool dude. We were chatting it up for a little bit. So, shout out to you, Josh. Really nice meeting you, and hope I see you around again. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say. So, again, just like last year, Twisted Magic Ninja, great fucking job. Uh, that was so much fun, and I will definitely be back next year. And, uh, yeah, I just uh, can't wait to experience it all again, and uh, I highly recommend it. So, uh, that's pretty much it. I know I've said that probably like six times now, but this is pretty much it. So, uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you for the support. And uh, as always, check out uh, Carnival Spirits. Make sure you're checking out CarnivalSpirits.com. Make sure to check out My Geek Scene. Link will be in the description below. As always, uh, or once again, I should say, thanks to Joe for bringing me along. And uh, that's it. So thanks for tuning in. This is Echo Side Fiend, and I will catch you in the next one. Too sweet.